The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Welcome along to the Maroon and White Pod. We're here to look ahead today to the final round of the All Ireland Series group, which Go are involved in, where they take on Irma this Sunday at two o'clock in Markovic Park. I'm joined by former Go under twenty selector Paddy Moran and Jonathan Higgins from Go Bay FM to look ahead uh, to this weekend's clash. Same opponents as last year, same round. Uh, Jonathan already getting nearly flashbacks of last year. Looking ahead to this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And you throw in the venue as well, where I think we all nearly had a heart attack earlier on this year in the championship. Um, so, yeah, there is a couple of horror moments, isn't there? A couple of shivers. It's ironic. The group was pretty much been a carbon copy carbon copy nearly uh, of last year's and the way the games have turned out as well. Uh, Galway with a, a Northern opponents first round out against 14 men. Early in the game, they get the job done for first round. Narrow little victory over West Me then, and then it all comes down to the the last the last game. I suppose it's a little bit of the only small little bit of change of dynamic is is this time. I think MR came into the group on the final day in third position last year, so they got a real real jump the way just the, the mad results. This time we know it's a win or nothing else pretty much uh, for Boric Joyce's side. So that changes the dynamic ever so slightly. Um, it's ironic this was the game last year that where the arse went on our season, the rug went from underneath us, the injuries kicked in. The bad bit of momentum and form, and I think we all knew leaving the press box last, last this time last year after the our mad defeat that it was going to be Mayo in the in the semi or the prelim um, quarter final that was just inevitable. Really wasn't it the way things had changed, but this time we know it's it's a win. Derry haven't helped her cause by continuing on that bad run of form like. They absolutely were shambolic against our man. I think that's hurt to Galway twofold. Firstly, is the fact, obviously, just the nuts and bolts of, of the permutations for the weekend coming up. Galway need a win. Their score difference now after um, our man pulled away in them is better than Galway. So a draw is no good. A draw will suit our man. That will have them top top on the table. So that changes the, the dynamics ever so slightly. And, and then we will see like the momentum now that our man are in. They've got over the hangover of the uh, yet another Ulster final defeat. I thought that was a result, especially you, you consider the manner of the result, the way they lost it and a couple of big moments and for truth be told, they didn't put the foot down when they had opportunities to against Donegal and got caught in pin and shoot out. You thought that was going to be them rattle after, you know, a series, a couple of bad results uh, over years and disappointing kind of soul destroying results, but they've got things back on track. Um, there's part of you delighted for Kieran McGinney, there's part of you going, oh no, why, why now, why choose now to be coming into a game with a little bit of momentum and I think the bookies have our mass slight favourites and that's probably as we talk about as so is it is it is it actually possible to talk about Galway football this year without mentioning the I word injuries. Um but mm-hmm. like who knows? It's Chinese whispers, isn't it really? Like the three big ones are are the concern and who will be taped up and who will be pushed out or do you look at the longer term picture? It's such a such a dynamic game of chessboard that Park Dyson is an extensive management team we will need now like you have to literally consider every facet of the decision that you do make are you going to push someone or are you not it's not like you can throw someone in for one big game and that's it the knock on effects of maybe out in a week later definitely out two weeks later and then you know into the business into the championship it's I don't know where you even start it's, it's weird that you have such a big big game for Galway and have we ever gone into a game with so many unknowns and so many unvariables so much uncertainty we should be talking about Galway in momentum here after getting over the line, getting a third conic final, the manner of that victory. But instead, we're all not quite back to square one, but so many question marks. And uh, yeah, it could be a long preview. It couldn't really because there literally is so, so many dynamics. And one change, one player back can have, you know, knock on effects left, right and centre. It's a, it's a strange, strange game. The split season has given us these squeezed in games with these more dynamics and none more so than and all eyes on Sligo on uh, on Sunday. Yeah, with that, Paddy, we probably had more permutations in our favour this time last year compared to this weekend. It's quite simply win and we're in a quarter final, and then else that happens, and we're back out again next week in a prelim. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think ideally what Bowie want is to win, go through, get that extra week rest, extra weeks rest. I think ideally that's what every team going through wants to get that extra week off as opposed to rolling into another game. Like we've seen it last year, as Jonathan touched on there, the season, we 
like up until that Armagh game, I think all the season was going on an upward curve internationally final, won the Connor final, and literally one misplaced pass, you know, Armagh get in for goal, they win. Next thing were an injury to Sean Kelly, we're out against um the next day against Mayo up in Pierce Stadium, they had nothing to lose, chinned us up there and the season was over. And really last year's season wasn't like there was a lot of negativity around it the way it finished in that, but it wasn't actually a bad season at all. It was literally a two a seven day turnaround cost the cost the season really. Um whereas this year it's I think all we know what they need. They need to they obviously they know what they need to win. They have to win and they need that extra week's rest because if that gets us, you know, more of our players and John's touched on a lot of injuries, if that gets us to our fully fit squad in two weeks' time, then you know, go have a realistic chance of getting to an Northern final, semi final final. Like that's that's the prize and officer. I'm sure Pork is acutely aware of that as well. And like last year, you know, having seen going through the you know, losing and then getting into the, the game the following week and then the season being over, they'll want to avoid that at all costs. You know, they really, really will. And I, I you know, it's like it's a game three of a three game series against Armagh, you know, like we played them in Pro Park of the Penny Shooter. We think we all remember that. It was an unbelievable occasion, unbelievable game, like drama. There was no love lost between them, you know, especially during Dexter time that time. If you remember there's a lot of handbags at the time, then playing them in Carrick and Shannon. Probably go with the better team on the day. Should have probably won the game. They shouldn't have been that far ahead, but you know, that last minute goal kind of cost us. And then you now we have round three here. So, you know, God, God, we won't fear them anyway. Definitely not. We won't fear them. So I think it's it's a realistic that God would be going to win the game. They, they have to win the game, as John said. No other way around it. Isn't that the thing, though, Paddy, with our injuries, how quickly things can turn here? Yeah, I mean, the common consensus out there is, and like, you know, Jonathan will probably. Than, than the likes of myself or whatever in being in the media but the common consensus out there about Galway is Galway need everyone fit they're, they're the team that needs of all the teams that are in the top four five six in the country the, the so-called contenders you know outside this maybe the, the top three you know the consensus is the Galway need their best players on the pitch at all times to you know really go on a good run and you know cause damage to those teams like, which you know fair enough Dublin lose a couple of players you know it's not going to impact them as much you know but like Go if we're without like you know Comer Kelly Finnerty those three would say for example at the weekend it does it does take from the team there's no getting around it like to be honest Sean Kelly and Damian Comer would make a Dublin fifteen do you know what I mean they're a huge loss for any team that make any team in the country but for us especially they're such leaders we 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 have to have them on the pitch really like, you know there's no two ways about it there's no way of dressing it up like lose them the caliber of them guys you know it's 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 a massive void. To fill, you know, for any any especially young lads coming in, it's 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 a big responsibility on the shoulders, you know. From what we've been hearing during the week, the word with Robert Finnerty is it's obviously been a knee issue, but that he has got an injection into it, and that's hopefully going to get him through the games. Uh, then after that, obviously we have Damien Comer. He hasn't played in the last few games. The word is he's going to be up against it. And then with Sean Kelly, the word is he's been back running. But literally, I don't think anyone really knows what the story with Sean Kelly is going to be. Um, that does seem what to be the word on the street with those three injuries in particular at the minute, Jonathan. Yeah, that's the consensus, really. And I suppose the hope is that you get one of the three back. Like, um, if it, if it is a case that with Rob is the, the whispers that we're hearing that it is a, a knee injury that's possibly manageable uh, with pain relief for a short term until it gets the uh, the proper TLC. Um, like maybe it is a situation where he needs 20 minutes just for, you know, the ma- to keep the match fitness. It's that the dynamic, isn't it, really? It's it's fitness and match fitness. And uh, there's no, like, there's no opportunity. Yes, you can have your A versus B games or, you know, pull in the development squad for extra numbers etc but nothing beats the, the cut and trust of championship and it is noticeable I think we have seen an increased tempo the league to the championship the, the provisional championships even to the All-Ireland series I think have gone up another neck of wood and don't forget this is a Galway side that maybe a, we're all talking about the the isolated injury say but it appears that the uh, the general plan was to, to go a bit steadier in the league and maybe not a peak as early as we did last season um and because the league was all about survival, wasn't it? Um, there was no, there was no even disguise about that. And to start motoring a bit, bit more freshly, and now is the time that if you are going with that sort of tactic, now is the time when players should be getting into into peak fitness, and you know there should be an extra bit of, couple of percent in the lungs of the players. So it'll be interesting to see, like the flip side of that, really, isn't it? We're all watching the demise of, of Derry in our group, but 
they were like oh, flat to the mat earlier on the season. You know, mm-hmm. Mickey Hart went all out in the um in the in the first prelim competition and then and then in the league bringing the, the guys back from Glen etc so quick and they won the league and then it's been off a cliff since that's actually a, the, the game on Saturday evening on that without going off on a tangent that's a very interesting battle with Westmead give us quite a scare they you wouldn't really out that they if Derry keep that that negative form but it just goes to show the two ends of if you are starting to hit, hit a bit of form now now is the time so like hopefully with Rob he will be he will be able to get some time. I think it would be a boost even if you only saw him for 20 minutes would be a big boost. Paddy will know more more than me in terms of dealing with Sean. Like Sean appears like that he's been injured for 18 months now or something like that. Will we ever see Sean without having to manage some form of an injury? Um, and then Damien is the big one, really, isn't it? Like when you have a repetitive muscle injury like that, you cannot take any risk. And he's so empowered to our system. The last thing, you can afford is another breakdown. So I'd say just from from the whispers you hear and from educated guesses, if you're ranking the players in terms of that three, who's who's likely to appear? It's it's uh, Rob one, Sean two, and and Damo bottom of the pile. But we will see. Like uh, the big thing I think for, for me in this game is is Shane Walsh. Like he was would have been very disappointed with his performance against um, Armad in Leitrim last year. Like it's the missed penalty. It's uh, he had a breakaway goal chance as well in the in the second half as, as well that wasn't taken. There was a long range. Ethan Rafferty was in goal at the time was caught at home. I think if it's this year you're watching the trend of of beating lobbed in, or fly keepers, you probably would have gone for it. But it was a big opportunity. The goal that they touched on is across the pass. The last free that Grubin got was never a free in a month of Sundays either. Um, there were small little things like that, and it felt like the game went away. There was a couple of big opportunities Galway left behind, but I think Galway were comfortable ahead of Armagh this time last year and they'll be hearing the big thing really and again I'd be interested to see Paddy's, ta- Paddy's tactical mind on this one really um, it apologizes a great record against Northern teams um, and, and I think a lot of that partly is the structure and the calmness that Galway can go in and then a clinic and edge it feels like Armagh are trying to play that game quite a lot and they've done that a lot of big games and ultimately they've come short with it Armagh I think are better when they're helter skelter it's unplanned it's flat to the mat it's crazy men everywhere I think I think I'd be interested, Paddy, the, the tactical head on it. But I think Galway need to make this a chess match and then then you know have the moments to class to cut it off. I think if this game goes bananas, that's when Armagh are dangerous. And look, Armagh in a huge momentum. And I, I think you need to try and stem that momentum initially. Curious to see what you think, Paddy. Yeah, no, I think you're 100% right. And just about the energy thing, I think from you know, the Westmead game, you chain watch effectively up on his own. You know, you need someone else with them in there. I mean, if they're if, if we just have Shane on his own up front, no matter what way we dress it up or down, you need an extra forward to take that pressure, take that load, that secondary ball. And if we had someone like a Rob Finnerty fit and fire, even for just a half, take the pressure off. But I just feel if we if we just if, if they were to persist to Shane up front on his own, our man would you know they what would they do? They'd send two or three players up on him every time and they kind of limit the ball he can do up front. Um yeah, John, what you were saying there about the, the Helter Skelter, our mad thrive on that, don't they? I mean, I was looking at the was it, um, the goal Derry against Derry at the weekend, Merlin's goal. You know, it was they won't get that space against Cor against Cor. Derry yeah. seems to have that kind of, you know, they were all over the place and it, it suited our man like it as you said, the Helter Skelter, like it you know, Derry had every player nearly available up inside our mass forty five, you know, and that next thing a breakaway goal. Similar to what Shane got against Westmead, they're not going to get that against Galway. There's no way Aquino Lead is going to allow Galway, you know, flood forward against our man, not have numbers back. You see, when we got to our final, Dylan McHugh, Kieran Roy, talking inside, you know, making the ground arrow. They're going to force our man, I would think, to shoot the distance, you know, and they're not going to commit, overly commit, I'd imagine, numbers for it. That's what I'd be saying. It'd be the way it'd be going. It yeah. Isn't it fascinating as well, Paddy? We've seen go, we've booked the trend a little bit and the fact that it's a full-back line that first aim is to defend. Don't get me wrong, in particular, like all three of them in particular, but yeah. they like to get forward with the ball. But by and large, McGrath has been, John McGrath has been outstanding. He is all-star nominee at the moment for me and Glenn is really coming back into it. Like Glenn hit one hand pass at the end of the Westmead game. I think it was... Kieran Malloy's point or might have been, no it might have been Matthew Tierney's the second last one but he took one hand pass as Westmead put up he must have taken five six Westmead players out of it mm-hmm. but just one one hand pass but they, by, that is the I suppose the attacking threat that they have but by and large they defend we've seen the tweak this year where Liam Silk ultimately plays centre back or definitely tags the, the, the whoever is in that 
orthodox centre forward yeah. position and then John Daly strolling down the left. I think we've seen John Daly struggle at times. He had a bad day against Westmead in the, in the heat there as well. It didn't really suit him the way they had a lot of heavy runners and it took another tactical change by putting a double tag on on, on McCartan at the end, like you, you saw Sean McCurns come on that role and you doubled up with O'Flaherty. But I think by and large, the three sitting and the Liam Silk, um, you know, tagging, tagging the centre forward and John Daly running and then you have Dylan McHugh running as well. I think while it mightn't look the prettiest at other, against the other teams, I think it's probably very well set up to match Armagh the, the way they like to set up also. Yeah, you have to be so pragmatic in these games as well, don't you? Like you can't, you know, you can't have the chest out and go, we're going to match these guys, you know, toe for toe and we're going to go goal for goal, support for support. You can't, you can't afford to do that. Not, not in this modern game anyway, because as you said, I don't think Armagh are a better team than Goy, but certainly as you said, when it goes to that level of chaos, you know, it's all over the place, unorganised, unorthodox. It definitely is, you know, they are, they're, they're extremely capable of putting up scores and causing damage to teams because I think yeah, look, I'm only rehashing my my earlier point, but yeah, you just have to be so pragmatic about this. You have to, you know, attack. You've still got three or four players back. You know, attacking ten or eleven, and go have the players to do that, and have the players to go, you know, hurt the lads and teams in different ways. You know, the likes of Matthew Tierney there could he go in full forward? You know, for a, an aerial bombardment like you know, Shane Walsh. You know, so many different players. Keen Darcy as well, big man around there. He's been in fine form. You know, so they'll they'll, they'll find it hard to match up even on the likes of them. You know, Galway have. They're big men like up there, Paul Connor as well, John Marr. They're well able to run, cover ground, and they're size. So, you know, if go stick to what we think they're going to do, which is, you know, as you said, Jonathan, hold guys back, have, you know, defenders, you know, holding the sh- mind in the sh- mind in the house back there. You know, go have enough up front that they can, you know, keep the ball. You know, as you said, it doesn't look pretty, but you have to be pragmatic in, in these kind of games. And if go get out of there with the, you know, an 11 10 win and spit in a week off, they won't even. 2-1 two, two, they won't care you know you have to just the re, the real, realistically it's just all about winning we touch it from the start it's about winning nothing else matters and for me if when I be watching it on Sunday it won't bother me if Galway hold on to the ball for 6 minutes and get a point and they're 3-1 up at half time it's 6 I won't be I won't be screaming at the television or screaming from the sideline or roaring it's that's what I want as a result. And people need to get up with that for this game anyway. It's not going to be pretty. The beautiful game, Paddy. The beautiful game. Yeah, it's a beautiful game. Yeah, well, winning is winning is more beautiful, I'd argue. Yes. <laughs> there will be a couple of uh, Galway supporters uh, roaring if that does happen um, at the weekend. But just on something you mentioned earlier, Paddy, you mentioned that someone needs to be inside with Shane Watch. That's obviously Rob if he's fit. Yeah. But who is it if Rob isn't fit? I suppose if Tom was come on, I suppose he came on against London and he got the two goals and he's been very unlucky with injuries. He's, you know, every time he comes on, he just brings an energy. He brings a serious energy to it. You know, there's always a chance of something happening when Tom was on the pitch. He'll, he'll, he'll load up and he'll, he'll have a crack at the post or, you know, go for goal. You know, Keneally came on against Derry. He scored, you know, he's one of our top young prospects, really. And Kitty O'Currian as well and had a, an unbelievable league as well. You know, he's I think he was our top scorer in the league. You know, he could score from distance as well. So it's hard to know. It's, it depends on what way they want to start. I suppose tactically, it depends on what, who Goy want to go with. Do they want to launch a Tomo, launch a Killian? Do they want to, you know, they did that last year. They brought him on after his, you know, he was outstanding for the 20s. He got, a, he got on for his debut, I think, against our up in, up in Leitrim. Um, so who would it be? I'd say for the experience in that, I'd probably go with Tomo. I'd have him in there because like that, he'd, he'd be a good foil for Shane. You know, he's probably the injuries are behind him now, I'd imagine. He's, you know, run a fitness, he's going well. Shane, and I'd be going with him to start. And then I'd be looking at bringing on the young lads, you know, for, to finish the energy. Like, I mean, the game would be more open, I think, when the likes of Liam and Killian come on, it would suit them. And next thing, they'll they'll cause they'll cause mayhem. They're two super footballers. And they're, only, they're still only 20, 21. So, so i you know, I'd be happy with any of the three of them starting, to be honest, you know. The one you missed there, Paddy, is McDade played inside against Westmead. He's done that a lot for Monave as well. You think about the Armagh players that are they're not shy about saying a word or two back, particularly the defenders. I fear for some of the younger lads, a bit of a cauldron where McDade, look, it, it was hard to tell in Westmead where it was a lack of match fat, 
match fitness or if it's just the role that didn't suit him as much. But he still won a couple of dirty balls, got a good point in the first half as well. I, I wouldn't be surprised if players are unavailable that they go with him inside again. Yeah, and you can see, look, you can see why, as you said, he's played inside with um, one a day. And like he is, look, he's the same kind of makeup, I suppose, as, as Demo. You know, he's big, he's strong, he's powerful, and he can win the ball. And I suppose that's their looking. You know, to to mimic the same thing with, with demo, like letting that ball in and having a guaranteed ball winner. So yeah, I, again, it wouldn't surprise me if they if they went to that. Personally, I like to see him further on the pitch. That's just me. Um, I like to see him out on the field and look, as you said, they're probably lack of match practice and whatnot that you know, they probably can't afford to play him. You know, for seventy minutes at Inter County, you know, at the minute maybe with uh, lack of lack of games and that, which is which is understandable too. Well, I, I, I like, look, if they went out there the next day with Killian up, up front with uh, Shane, that would be, I'd be in favour of that too. And having those three young, as we mentioned, Tomo, Liam and Killian coming on, you know, they bring such dynamism to it. You know, they, they're just, you can't beat a bit of youth and you can't beat a young force coming on. They're just mad to make their mark. They, you know, they're, they're really, really, really keen to, you know, get on the score sheet as well. You know, not to nothing silly, but they're, you know, they're well able to take their scores. I trust them, you know, I, you know, Dealt them, three of them, like you know, they're, they're all well able to, to expose under pressure. Yeah, they don't have any fear of it either, they don't have any fear of our mass. So, yeah, if we're, if we're bringing the three of those guys on in the second half, you know, we're in a, we're in a good spot, I, I think, anyway, to see out the game. And Paul, I don't want to hog too much, but there's one thing that I think we're all looking forward to at the weekend is uh, John Maher tearing after Reno Real around the place. If you feel like that's the two of them. That could be worth the camera on its own. Two big, strong horses of men. Oh, Neil needs to be stopped. Needs to be stopped. He's a beautiful kick passer. Maybe a little bit like Conrad does for us as well. But I, you'd imagine that Maher will go to him. And I think all three of us are looking forward to that battle. Yeah, they're trying to hide him too, aren't they? They're trying to hide him further up the pitch, like to like you know playing him anywhere from six forwards. You know that there's that less there's less space, and you can see what they're trying to do by playing him midfield. Like they're trying to hide him and kind of free him up out around the middle. As you said, like it's going to be some, it'll be some kind of watching match <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> it is one thing they do in midfield, though. They've constantly swapped two between Grimley, Creeley, and, and Rain O'Neill yeah. out, out around the middle. That's what they um, do seem to do. I was just going to touch on it before I look at some of the matchups, Jonathan, but two players that probably do need games this weekend just because they played so few this year is Matt Dade, as we mentioned, but Keen Hernan with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Keen Hernan, I suppose, defied a lot of GA uh, logic, didn't he, really, um, at, the, at the Westmead game? No preseason. Um, Porek, when he was touching on when we asked him earlier on in the year, like uh, when we were, it was kind of struggled to get a lot of, I suppose, information at the start of the year. So I think it was the after the Mayo game uh, when Porek probably understood he wasn't in the best, best of form after that bummer of a result but uh, you know you're getting trying to get updates and the likes of him and the likes of James McLaughlin and he's like no they're away till, till May or June or whatever and then it's like uh, I think it was Morris actually that asked the question then will they be back and he's like oh no should they be too late to be too late then um, it speaks volumes really doesn't it for Keane Herney the fact that he's come back like Lord Jesus if I was out in America <laughs> for six months I wouldn't be fit enough to come back in an inter-county game never, hardly a club game never mind an inter-county game but like he's you know he's flying fit isn't he yeah um, at, a, at a very good first half, I thought definitely tired a little bit. Again, it's that double caveat, isn't it? Really between match fitness and uh, and actual fitness, and then you throw in the the health risk culture nature of the of the game uh, and the heat and everything that went with it in Mullingar. But yeah, no, certainly a huge option. It was interesting to see him being played in that kind of wing forward hearted role as well. Um, it gives another option that way. Um, the team selection as a whole, I think, will be very interesting. Yeah. Particularly from, well, okay, one, I think one to seven is pretty much written in stone now. I think there's no, there's no real ch- shape on that. I know that like there will be calls for a lot of calls for Daniel Flaherty, who seems to have such an impact every time he comes on. But then Sean McCurran had, had a good game as well. I think we're we're fortunate that we are stacked, and it's probably a testament really to the fact that the backs are doing so good that Keen Hearn comes on and plays in, in a wing forward role last year. So stand up player. I think ironically enough, he'd have probably disappointing game against Armagh he was playing more of a full back role which didn't seem to suit him at, at all then but yeah, yeah certainly yeah, another big player last year, yeah. yeah so like I don't think we'll see that again but um, like 
Carl Sweeney's back in the equation now as well. Yeah, and you saw that big backdoor cut that he had for a Matthew Tierney point, a very big uh, involvement as well. And Porrick, by all sense of word, loves Sweeney as well. Like, who, who wouldn't with that, that energetic option at half forward? So, look, there's, there's a couple of areas that we are, you know, uncertain of in terms of who is available and whatnot. But I, I think... I was going to say one to seven, probably one to nine, because it's yeah. probably going to be Mar and Connery again, isn't it? Really, it's hard to see any any change of that. Um, you know, you're thinking out loud there. Heaney's going to start. Matthew Tierney's definitely going to start. Keen Darcy's given himself a good a good boost. You've now Keen Hernan there looking for options, and then inside Finnerty, is he going to go there? Who's going to go full for full forward? Will McDade again, or will McDade be out a little bit deeper? And of course, Shane will start. So. There is actually a couple of question marks for what a person night in Lock George when they are in the stadium when they get the the F four sheet of paper and and finalise it. But yeah, like there is there is options. You wouldn't even be surprised whatever team is named that there's a couple of changes then to go as well. But we actually, when you think about it that way, there is actually there's actually a couple of options, isn't there? Like there's a couple of the key ones that you talked about, but there is at the same time a couple of ones there we could have a, a justified heavy debate about. Cliche as well, Jonathan, and oh, like it's what it is. It's going to be a 20, 20 pack game. Oh, here we go. Here's the manager yeah. talk. Come on, <laughs> you're only in the role two months. So, basically, you're naming Daniel O'Clark as my team captain. We're just losing it here slightly, Paddy. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. just he, he adds to it every time he comes on. His pace, his power, the rank running. Like, it's very hard for over that you're saying Carl Sweeney's back I mean, Carl is, and he's got such an engine again pace like go we're going to be unloading serious pace into the team like, and I know we touched on it earlier on like Armad the way they play the game but like I'd argue if you look at the bench that go I have compared to Armad bar maybe Oshin O'Neill is a real standout for me I think go I have a better bench you know and especially if if, if they play the way we think they're going to play by you know, maybe go we're going to defend in you know, have a few numbers defending and maybe break out against our man, kind of go through the hand, go through the lines, um, carry the ball through them, like, you know, drive them with the ball. You can't look past Scoa's bench, I think, has been, been been stronger, especially in regard with that, like, you know, serious pace, lads carrying the ball. And, in, you know, you're not going down a level by what we're bringing on either, you know. We talked about in the forwards as well. Like, I think what Go are bringing in, it's not, the, the level isn't going to, isn't dropping off. As much as maybe I don't know, the Armagh bench. I don't, I don't. I don't see it as being as strong as Go is. I'll probably put the curse them out. They'll probably light it up on Sunday. But yeah, that's that's where I, I I see Go. We have definitely got an advantage with the bench they have anyway, for sure. Would you start Daniel this weekend? Would I start Daniel this weekend? Um, well, you see, I've uh, Daniel will be back in college again in September. So yeah, yes, I will. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think he's captain. <laughs> <laughs> Would I start him? Yeah, I, I'd have no problem starting Daniel McCarthy. He's proven himself. Again, he's only a lad of 2021, Carl Sweeney, 21, 22. These guys are young and they're well capable. I, like, I've had a first kind of first row view of these guys playing against, you know, northern opposition for the last, you know, since looking like what the game was like, what, 29, 30, like the last seven, eight, nine years I've seen. Galway lads go up against you know, northern opposition, your Queen, St Mary's, you know, um, Jordanstown, and we're never found wanting, never found lacking against them. So I'd have no fear of any of our lads because they're, you know, making an impact. Or like for the likes of Daniel Farage, you'd have no no problem. You see, I suppose look from a management point of view, and I'll put my management hat on again here for Jonathan. Um, you're kind of you need impact. And Daniel has given Galway impact every single time. And look, the unfortunate thing is he's young enough anyway that it won't happen. But you don't want to get pigeonholed as that impact player. It's like yeah, you start to no no because you know he makes such a impact. You can't risk starting him because of the lift he gives. Like I'd have no problem starting him. So he's seriously dynamic and he's well able to take a score too. So if the thinking is that they want to go from deep, run from deep, kick scores from you know coming from that half back line, I'd have no problem starting him. None whatsoever. Like I've seen him play this year alone. We played northern off. We played northern colleges. I think it was three times. And he was, he was excellent in the ball. Really was. He was brilliant. He started midfield for us. You know, he was he was top class. Yeah. So I have no, no issue with uh, Daniel starting. Don't ask me who to drop now. That's the only thing. <laughs> I was going to say your manager had on now. Like <laughs> <laughs> thrown away quickly. Yeah. Look. Look. 
would you have any concerns about Daniel starting? Absolutely none whatsoever. He's proven that not just this year and years gone by as well. But I just like the dynamic that he gives us in the potential if we do need to chase at them. If it is Armagh pushing up, if it is a little bit more tired, or, um, he is perfect at, at that rocket down down the left wing. And look at the big games. You, you go back to Tyrone in the in the, in the league, all it stands out in memory, the, the impact that he had on yeah. Um, since he came back on the bench. But like uh, another player as well that I was delighted for get, getting a point at the end was Kieran Malloy. He's had a difficult year, gone, probably gone back to the uh, to, this was the tail end of the of the club scene for Kerr Finn. Didn't didn't finish too great on him from a personal note. Um and then it was a mixed bag really, wasn't it? And cultivated really with the the dairy game in the league where he's black carded uh, and um it just wasn't going right. He's a player that we were all excited about when he returned back from from injury, but wasn't it so so pleasing to see him get the the, the important or kind of that crucial score at the end of the game against Westmeath? And look, he has to be chomping at the bit as well as as another option to come on and get more more air miles on the clock then as well. But that's the good thing that I think we are we are blessed with a couple of a couple of options um, there as well. And I think the old cliche, we will. Probably need quite a lot of them off the bench, um, but if you're asking me now, I think it's one to seven because I think you see that same thing happen. I think you see Liam Silicon Grugan, and you think you see John Sweep, and they might sit off. They might allow him a p- bit more pocket of space, um, and I think that sweeper role is potentially going to be needed a lot more. It, the way I'm uh, like to boot the ball in early, along uh, O'Neill likes to boot it in early. I think that sweeping role inside. And I think there will be a better reaction from John Daly as well. So I would just stick. I'd have no concerns if he if he was to start Daniel, but I would still stay with the one to seven because like one player out of that, it's going to a lot of talk of. You, you think he's going to be chipped away, and I heard a number of people say it, and potentially with Sean Kelly's fitness, is Sean Fitz at full back, but he's been phenomenal um, over over the course of the year. He's really really grown into the goal into that role, and. Um, more than looks at home there. Another fine game in Mullingar as well. Likes to come forward with the ball as well, developing a little more, a little bit more of that to his game as well. So, I would, I would stay as is, and we have a couple of options both in the full back line in the terms of the likes of Sean McCurns, uh, and then like you know, it's a couple of options, isn't there? Daniel being top of the pile then at, at wing back, but I think that's the way the lads will will shape up. Do you expect Aiden Falker to go in on? Shane Walsh, Paddy? Uh, I would, yeah. I think he'll, he'll take him. I think he'll, 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 I think he'll, he'll try and match him and he'll try and, you know, I think he'll try and corral him into I think I think they'll try and double up as much as they can on, on Shane. I think they're going to try and, you know, literally guide him out to, you know, unfavorable positions. They're going to try and, you know, hunt him out wide. They're, the last thing they're going to want is they're going to want him to turn around bearing down on goal. I think I think it's going to be a numbers game back there for him. Uh, I mean, if I was Arma, and that, that's what I'd be doing, is especially with the injuries and say if there was no opportunity to give like aid, I'd say they put the, a serious focus on on Shane and, you know, trying to literally double him up, triple him up, get as many people around him as possible, you know? I think, yeah, Bork is, he's the man to, to kind of steer that ship, you know? Lead them, lead them from back there. He's the exper- you know, he has the experience. He's, you know, he's probably the most likely candidate to one of them. He's a fair ping outside of the left as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he can, he can start to get back and do it as well. Like yeah, they're dangerous. They're a dangerous, dangerous side. You know, they they really are. They quality, they quality all over the pitch. I just don't think they're as put on the supporters side. I just don't think they're as they're as good as go. I really like you know. But this is a huge game for them as well. They, you know, they in terms of their Johnson, they've lost games. They've lost Ulster finals fairly tightly. Like they haven't. You know, I know they beat Galway last year, and that was a again that was a Freak result, bounce for ball, miss penalty. You know that was, you know, I, I don't put much stock in that. But yeah. I think remember, remember last year as well. If Tyrone had just done their job um, last year as well, we still would have been okay. That's how far back yeah. um, they were. You had that f- freak, and then like last year was a freak, wasn't it? Like not just Galway in terms of, but then you had Mayo getting caught as well, um, right at the depths. So, well, like Mayo shouldn't like Galway's prelim. Last year, yes, the other week in a row would have killed us with the, with the injuries, etc. But it shouldn't be as good as good as opposition as Mayo. And I don't think you'll probably see that as much. I think it's watered down a little bit this year. Yeah, I think, that's the only, I think that's the only benefit, really, isn't it? Like, I mean, if 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 Boy weren't to get out and again, not to be negative, but if they weren't to top the group, I think it would be 
have them, they could potentially like have another player in the major teams if they want to be there. Step in. If any aspirations, even on the seven day turnaround, they should be getting over those teams. You know, it's just teams. the route gets a little, you know, you play a seeded team then in the, in the quarter. Yeah, exactly. so yeah, it's definitely yeah. huge perks. I'll finish on top, but um, yeah. You just don't want to be getting anyone from Group Three. That's the only really group of a third place that you could end up getting a Tyrone potentially in a prelim quarterfinal, and with the injuries, that probably makes things harder than it needs yeah. to be. And you talk about injuries as well after the weekend. You don't know what you're going to pick up after the weekend. Like last year, if you pick up a certain player, gets a knock, goes into a you know seven day turnaround with that knock, trying to manage that, trying to get that back because again, then it becomes a real. You know, do or die game for that's the season on the line. It's, it changes the dynamic of everything. You know, it really does. So, yeah, it's. It, I suppose this is the kind of weekend where the football championship really comes to life, doesn't it? Like it's really. I know we're only eliminating one team, which is the personal bugbear of mine. I think it should be two, but it does. It kind of it, it, last year it definitely sprung the championship into life. You know, after the final weekend and then into the, the prelims. You know, so hopefully to do likewise again this year. You know. John, then you referenced something at the start that it needs to be a chess match, but does this also, obviously, Armagh probably coming into this game a lot better than last year. The confidence is a bit higher after a big win, but there's still this frailty of Armagh in the last quarter in big games. Is that what Galway want this weekend to be bringing it down the stretch? Uh, very much so, yeah. Uh, and look, in Galway, the one thing that Galway has been consistent about over the course this year is finishing games quite strong. Look, you can argue some of the Opposition, just the way the nature of the path uh, hasn't been th the strongest and maybe you're not getting the best sample size, but you can still only have the air and the legs and you know you can only do what's, what's in front of you. I think you can negate the, the London game out of the equation, really. Uh, yeah. the, you're talking about sample sizes, I think, with the greatest respect. And I, like, I, I was desperately, they were, London were actually desperately unlucky uh, last week not to prog progress um, further. And under Maher there as well, they have a really, really shrewd coach. And I think they're certainly one of the feel-good um, stories about, about the GA at the moment is their continuous uh, development and uh, certainly something to keep an eye out in the next couple of years. But then go beyond to Sligo. Back at the scene, the crime, the venue for, for Sunday's game, but how strong did they finish there? Sligo literally gave it absolutely everything. They, you know, a haymaker after haymaker, they went for it all. Go, we ground them down a little bit of moment at the end. The finish against Mayo, I think it gets under related just how how hard Galway went at the end. And, you know, a lot of talk about goalkeepers coming forward. Gleason getting his paw on that second last kick out for the for the equalizing score. Massive, massive moments. And then even at the you know, the, obviously the the, the the squeeze that goes on for the for the last three and the, the finish. But even the way the goal we like hung them out and they, it was it was actually very interesting to hear Sean speak about the mindset beyond that about that last kick out with Morris there on, on one of his pods a couple of weeks ago about how they were sitting up because they knew the Mayo running game and they pressed them and you watch it's so underrated, but watch the pressing that Shane did uh, for that last Mayo move that eventually they have to, the clock is up and they have to swing one from distance away. But, you know, phenomenal work rate, but such a strong finish. Um, the Derry game, we did still finish strong. I think that runaway score, the, the goal, the Darcy goal, probably sums that one up with how strong that they did. Again, mini caveat, the 14 players, and we know how much of a basket case De Derry have developed to be into uh, at the moment. And then yet again, against Westmeath, Say what you like about look and what's that old saying that the harder I train, the luckier I get, etc. But it was a strong, strong finish and Galway pushed on at the at the end as well, even when they did get the goal. So that's been a common theme, I think, on Galway. We touched on there as well to give another little kind of layer on credibility onto, onto that sort of theory is the impact the Galway potentially have off the bench. You look at the calibre of players that are come at, that have the opportunity to come on. Of Flaherty's had big impacts. Sweeney, we touched on. Tomo. You talk about the the two sharp shooters, the Canada and O'Curry, um, you know, and there 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 is options uh, there, um, but like, I think our man, or as I touched on earlier, I really think, and particularly with Kieran Donny being involved, they are trying to bring something different to the helter skelter, but they can't resist going back to the helter skelter at most times uh, of need or. Yeah, and the 2022 game is probably a prime example of that. Like, Galway, that game won, we're out the door. A couple of minutes of absolutely pandemonium. Galway can't breathe. They're over like a swarm. And in the, in the goal, Galway do well in the end to come through. 
um, and, and get over the line there. But I, I, I think I like you can only go by what you've seen. I've seen a lot of our man in the flesh in the last couple of years. Ultimately, I think when they do try and play streetwise, they think of the Ulster final this year, you even think of the Ulster final last year, when they try and wind it down, that's where it doesn't, doesn't seem to work for them for whatever reason. I think their players are ultimately more flat to the mat and as much as they try. So that's why I'd be very, like, go, we have the opportunity to go out and play good football against them. But I, I think the more measured approach, of, which we will almost certainly see, I think, against... Uh, against our man at the weekend will be a little bit more structure, probably a little bit more on the counter attack. Then potentially, if they do our man push up at the end, we do go a bit more direct with it. Well, I think you, while you will see Goey mixing it up, I think ultimately that's where Goey need to get the battle. And if it is going down the gun of the game and it's even enough, you'd probably say Goey are in a good strong position and and going to push on. Um, there's just a bit of edge with them, isn't it, at the moment, but. Yeah, like 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 what is it? Paddy's old thing. I was doing the West Me game at the week, the weekend as well. So I randomly went down a, a rabbit hole last night, and I found that Paddy O'Shea speech uh, mocked over to the Alpacino one from any given Sunday. It was quite a mix as well. But the grain of rice sort of theory there as well. Um, it comes into the equation. Look, it could take something small. We have seen small moments be a big impact in games over the course of the year. But you, you have to say, I think Galway's game plan will be to try and bring it down the gun. Um, while it's kind of even off and then push on because you do feel that Galway will have that recent muscle memory over them again. And on top of that, there's got to be a bit of a bite. You heard Matthew Tierney after, uh, speaking to me after the last Westmead game. We want to try and make this right for the fans as well and put that right wrong because that hurt the team last year. The criticism and everything that came with it where I think it was it was a year or kind of an ending to year that didn't reflect how good goal we were. And hopefully we've seen that again this year. But it, it could take something small. But I, I firmly believe that goal we will take the more caged, caution, cautionary approach here. Um, you know, I'm mad. Do, like, could, would it be fair to say they have a small bit of a false sense of where they're at too after that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think it's a fair reflection of where they're at. I think I'm mad, to be honest. I watched them in the Division Two League final. Like, when something's on the line, like a real you know, a, a, like in the final or that, they haven't been able to get over the line. They just, they're just not able to get over the line. And I think, you know, as you said, Jonathan, we are able to get over the line in tight games, like beating Mayo in the kind of final, you know, it is a huge achievement to get, to get over the line against a quality team like that. Whereas, if they're my side, rightly or wrongly, and I don't want to be putting the commentators personal from a call point of view, but they fail to get over the line in really tight games to be something really meaningful on the, you know, on offer. You know, and I just think, if that little bit of um, brittleness to them, that I, I think they, that, that I think Galway can, you know, get over the line someday. I just don't think this are my team, rightly or wrongly. Look, they, they, they can blow it away. Like that Derry game, I don't think is a, a complete reflection of where it on Derry as a team, where they're at, you know, as a, you know, when the ball goes blazing or where our man are at. I just think that, yeah, I think Galway, I think Galway will, um, I think Galway will make this an arm wrestle and they'll, they'll get over the line. You touched on a very good point there, Paddy. And sorry for hogging again, but I was one of the weirdos that watched the high behind of, of the Armagh Derry game. Lads, the Derry shape, kamikaze doesn't even come close to describing it. Um, <laughs> they're not even going to get a percentage of that against Galway. Like, and and that was the ultimately the game, as weird as it all was, even enough, aside from those moments of just kamikaze, bananas, weird, oh, I don't know what it is, the, what insanity doing the same thing over and over again and, and trying to get a different result. Just beggars believe how they kept on doing it. You did see the players trying to, to be fair, to try and change things on the pitch, but it was ingrained into them, the setup. And like, ultimately that game was decided on four or five moments where there was a complete push up and they had a bit of, not even huge tactical announce. They just went, okay, there's a load of lads back there already. My defender is going, going to go into the pile. Do you know what? There's enough back there to, to mind him. I'm just going to sit here all on my own. The keeper's in front of me, the other side. I'm just going to stay here and I have half, half an acre in front of me in an open goal. That's ultimately what that game came down to. <laughs> Whatever, but we have a lot of variables and unknowns about what might happen Sunday. But I can tell you safely, that ain't going to happen. And like just to touch on the, that point about our man, like you know, getting the run on Derry, it is such a fine line of 
giving a team confidence or a false sense of security. Like, don't know which way your team is going to, what side they're going to fall on, you know. So, yeah, they could come out. You know, it could be a positive. They could come out and be, you know, that could be the, the G up they need to add to their season. But also, it can also really lead to a false sense of security. And I'd like to see, we'll know soon enough. We'll know after 10 minutes again in the game on Sunday where we're exactly our man at in regard to that. I mean, it is such a fine line. Matchup wise from a Galway defensive point of view, probably Johnny McGrath, you'd imagine on Connor Turbis, Jack Lynn, Ushin Connery, Tiernan Kelly, Dylan McHugh, Roy Gergen, Liam Silk, and John Daly, Stephen Campbell. Yeah, although I think you'll see Daly sit in and Campbell if he goes a bit further at the pitch, Daly isn't going to track him, so I think he'll be tagged by further on the pitch. I really see John Daly playing more of a, an old school sweeper role uh, in, in this game. I don't know why, I just have that in my head. That's the way that they'll shape up and they'll allow, if Campbell does drop, that you'll have someone like a King Darcy, someone like that, tagging him from, from a little bit uh, deeper out the pitch. I really think Daly will sit in for this game. But I think the rest, you're, you're pretty much bang on the money there. You'd have to tag him with Campbell. His game is so, so deep. Like, he just gets on the ball. He's fine in touch. He's able to kick scores, passes. I don't know, you'd want to tag him for the best case. Like, wherever he goes, you need to find him. Well, That's the thing. Say- the thing is, too, we've referenced it on the podcast over the last few weeks. Maybe there's certain people say that John Daly isn't going as well, but it's coming back to that there's teams that are going out and they've seen what John Daly did in the 22 final, even last year in 23. There's teams going out tagging John Daly now. And also on that, really, is is, is our change as well as is, is, uh, is strengthening our defence. We're probably weakened his role against teams which are pushing on the West Mead game is a prime example of that because when we get the ball um, because he's not playing centre back anymore by default he's pretty much playing hybrid left half back really and watch him when we have the ball he'll be coming forward the pitch they're like they're trying to get him to be more of a playmaker higher up higher up the pitch but I suppose that's understandable enough given that our full back line by and large sits but it's just taken away the natural reading of the game sweeper role that we've come accustomed to uh, and that actually probably started in Mullingar 12 months ago when Roland O'Toole dropped off him and made absolutely carnage against him. Roland O'Toole didn't get a sniff at the weekend because Liam Silk was up his backside and just, I know he had the black card and whatnot, maybe that distracted him, but like he didn't get a sniff from play and it was actually Liam Silk has the ability, Liam Silk is so underrated as well, like he has the ability just to take one of their main forwards completely out of the game while still not impacting the benefit that he can give attacking forward. Like, he's a phenomenal footballer. Um, it's such a big impact having him back. You go back, we talked about 22 in the, the RMA game, but 22 were in the final against Sean O'Shea. It doesn't get talked about enough what, it, what he did that day. Um, and that's the real fine. The, the flip side is, with Daly in that in that role, I think when he is, he doesn't have the raw pace to get up and down, up and down, up and down. So that's why we have seen that change with O'Flaherty and, and others. But mainly O'Flaherty replace him when, when Galway are going a full out. But I just I just have a feeling, I don't know why it's in my head all the whole, the whole time, but I just think that he will have an opportunity to sit in a bit more as the, as the more sweeper and that you will have someone, if it is Campbell, go out a little bit deeper that, that he'll be tagged further at the pitch. We'll see. But um, that's just uh, the way my mind is going at the moment. Yeah, we lost Paddy, so hopefully um, we'll get him back there in a minute or two. Um, but just on that, Jonathan, we referenced it at the start. Obviously, we all want here um, a two-week break. We want to finish top of the group and not be out again until a quarter-final in Crow Park. That's really the key this weekend. Oh, huge, yeah. It's... It's, it, you know, it, it, there's so many caveats, isn't there, really, or so many uh, tangents that you can get on answering that question. It's it's momentum. It's uh, it's an easier route. It's getting that rest period. Um, uh, and I think the key thing really is God, always championship campaign has been built on momentum, really, hasn't it? And you've seen the late, we talked about the late finishes, but the, the win over Sligo, mm-hmm. followed on by the scenes in the Connick final where ultimately, like, have you ever seen always celebrate a kind of final as much? I know there was a couple of caveats to that in terms of the emotion at the end and Conor Gleeson come forward for what looked like the first time to many of us watching him in Maroon taking a free kick and the way it went over in the lake rally from behind. And uh, But it was more than that, really. It was golly, ultimately, when full Mayo afterwards, the crowds on the pitch. Have you ever seen that much out, out as well? And it's given 
it's weird how one result has two teams that were even enough on the river together go away. Mayo may have gone one way. We've gone the other in terms of momentum on from that couple of minutes of injury time, ultimately, wasn't it? Like, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy, but you do want to keep that going again. I think if I'm talking to Parik at the end of the game, whatever, three, four o'clock in, in Sligo, and we don't get the win, I think we'll be all in a negative place. And it'll be hard to get that out of your mindset. The mind is a funny old thing, isn't it? Um, and why I touched on earlier as well, I don't think the prelims are going to be the bowl of piranhas as they were this time last year. You still don't want to be going down there, and particularly with goalies injuries turn into the turn into the equation as well. And whatever knocks are to come, I think you have to have that week off. And look, there's no bigger example, isn't there, than Mayo last year. They got over the line uh, yeah. against them in the prelim, but they were on one leg for the second half against Dublin. Dublin won pretty handy. It's unique. That's, it's uh, just it's a two and three chance of playing Dublin or Kerry too. Yeah. That's yeah. it as well. You, you you don't you don't want to be you don't want to play in a seeded team in the quarterfinal um, either. So. Yeah, no, it's imperative really that go we get the result. And I think, look, we talked a lot about they are maybe downplaying Armagh. Look, they are. There's no question about it. They are a dangerous team. They will create a lot of trouble. They'll have a huge amount of fans. They'll be in their face. They'll be pumped to the last, as you would expect from Kieran McGinley side. But I think ultimately, I am hoping now that go we will just have enough just to get over the over the over the line. One point will do, uh, and all that. And I, I think there's just a bit more there in Galway. The motivation of last year. As well, thrown onto it, touched on that a couple of times. But how sick were we all leaving Carrick and Shannon uh, this time last year? So, look, it's a huge, huge game, um, and it'll be a dangerous game, and everything that goes with that. But I just hopeful that goal we will have enough in the end just to, to squeeze over the line, and uh, hopefully, we'll be looking for bus and train tickets and everything else for Croker. Yeah, they're going a bit immature, haven't they? Like, as in. Just to finish up your point there, Jonathan, they've def- like when you're talking about our map being pumped and being psyched and being, you know, wired into Goy, but I think Goy, you know, under the five years of PJ, they're, they're a mature team, they're mature, even though there's relatively young lads there, they won't let that bottom them really on something. They know what they have to do to get the result of how they want to do it. I think ultimately that's what's going to see them over the line compared to maybe our man who are, you know, they feed off the, the oxygen of spores and as you said, the helter skelter of it all too. Just finally, so. Final predictions. We're all going for a goal and win, but how much are goal we going to win by on Sunday? Go away by three. Three. I've made it easy oh. for you now. <laughs> go away by one. Oh, he was underneath. I, I, we would take anything. You take half a point if there was yeah. such a thing. Isn't it? A lot of messing around with how scoring yeah. systems would. Um, yeah, go away by one point will do it. I really think it's going to be tight. I really think it's going to be yeah, tight. Anthem, I, put a, Anthem put a draw or, or a defeat, Rebo. Yeah, one one will do. I think it'll be one. I, I think it's going to be tight. I think it's Anthem in that region of one to three. You take it. Um, <laughs> There's the political <laughs> Yeah, you see. You have to cover yourself well. <laughs> Just let them all out there. Let the yeah. bones out in front. <laughs> yeah, but obviously, a draw uh, won't get going into the uh, quarterfinal. They need to win to get a result uh, this weekend against Armagh. But that's all uh, we do have time for uh, on today's show. Thanks to uh, Jonathan and Paddy for coming on. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul.